the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bond. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shoo Sin Shoo. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What is up, man? Yeah, not too much. Just uh, enjoying this quarantine life and, uh, you know, whatever. Trying to get work done. <laughs> yeah, man. I hear you. Uh, just trying to get by uh, and trying to talk sports whenever I can, man. And so, you know, we figured we you know we we probably would have been talking opening day baseball today but unfortunately uh shed a tear that's not happening um but thankfully to the rescue of the nfl and so we're going to talk some free agency news um before we jump into that though uh you know everybody's heard noah Syndergaard getting tommy john i mean (laughs) could there be any more met thing to happen to the mets i mean they get Tommy John came out of like nowhere. It felt like uh, they're just gonna give Tommy John to the Thor, while nobody was really doing a whole lot. So <laughs> I don't know. Seemed kind of peculiar to me, and kind of screwed uh, Greg in our in our FXP draft. He uh, he drafted him Monday night, and then the news came out Tuesday. <laughs> he was all pissed. I mean. I don't blame him. I mean, I would have been too. I thought about it. I was like, oh crap, did I draft? I was like, no, 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 I didn't. I'm good. So, all right, man. Well, let's get going here. I got a lot to talk about, but first, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, Beer. What you got? Well, I got a couple tonight since I feel like it's going to be one of those shows, but um, (laughs) I'm starting off with uh, Firestone Walker's uh, Luponic Distortion IPA series. I believe this one is uh, number 15 in the series. Nice. Uh, It says hints of kiwi, lychee, and feijoa. I don't know what the hell that is, but (laughs) it's good. Um, I I like it. I've I've, uh, been a fan of all of their Luponic Distortions that we've had. So... Most of the ones I've had have been at the uh, Frisco's that we that we visit quite frequently when we are yes. doing our planning for these shows. Uh, but yeah, good stuff, man. Uh, so mine's a Sierra Nevada Fantastic Haze Imper- Imperial IPA, um, and it is quite fantastic. I'm going to give it a four and a half on Untapped. It is right up there. It's actually a nine percent, so pretty strong. But uh, I mean, as most Imperial IPAs are, they're pretty strong. But it's uh, it's not like super heavy either, like some Imperials. So it's it's good because it's got the you know the haze the hazy you know effect with it too. So it kind of lightens it up a little bit at the same time. So it's it's just a solid solid brew for me, man. Nice. All right, so to join us this week, uh, we weren't able to get him on during the baseball previews. Just had conflicts for most of the weeks, unfortunately, but. Uh, thankfully we had an opening for him this week and Jake Seeley from the athletic joins us. What's up, Jake? Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. I uh, unfortunately had Syndergaard in Tat Wars, so oh. I've already, I already lost Syndergaard and sale. So that, that's fine. Oh. oh, that's cool. I've, I've got sale in uh, TGFBI and got royally screwed. I took him, I thought super late, you know, not super late, but it was like pick thirties eight or something like that. And, and I was like, man, I'll take a chance there. Yeah. That backfired. So whatever <laughs> that sucks yeah it's a uh it's as it bad in both leagues actually in labor i think it's what I, so all the pitching was where the values were and it ended right. up being scherzer sales Syndergaard, snell so basically Ooh. lost all of them at this point well scherzer might be okay uh and tanaka and i think that's it like when tanaka's your healthiest pitcher you're in trouble yeah that's pretty brutal yeah <laughs> All right, man. So we're going to talk some NFL free agency trades. Uh, Start with some of these trades, though. Uh, You ready to jump right into this? Mayor, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's let's start here with the first one that that happened. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins traded from Houston to the Arizona Cardinals. 
for David Johnson, and there were some picks thrown in. Um, this one straight up like made made me like scratch my head. I don't really know what in the world, as many people appear on Twitter, have no idea what Bill O'Brien is doing. Uh, I mean, I guess give us your thoughts on just like the trade in general, like. <laughs> I mean, what? It's crap. I mean, yeah, right. I mean, uh, at least we're not alone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we have to. I think the entire world knows that. I don't think we have to go down that. Route. No. Okay. <laughs> so okay, let's let's go fantasy football here. So yeah, most people are interested in DeAndre Hopkins at this point. So let's start with him. DeAndre Hopkins moving from Houston, where he has thrived for for a few years there. Um, he now goes to Arizona where he's not going to have um, Deshaun thrown to him. He's going to have Kyler Murray coming off second year, Drake. He's going to have Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk along with him. I mean, are you feeling like Hopkins is just kind of going to be Hopkins still, or are we going to be a little worried that his value drops a little bit? I'm not worried at all. I've, honestly, I think last year is his floor, and if last year's his floor is wide receiver seven, then I don't understand what people's problem is with DeAndre Hopkins because – Kyler Murray throws a great deep ball. Kyler Murray threw more times than Deshaun Watson did last year. Granted, it was one extra game, but it was also almost 50 times more. It's not like it was, you know, only 20 more. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about the targets. I'm not worried about the deep ball. I'm not worried about DeAndre Hopkins overall. I mean, we I had this debate on our show, and I would still take him number three before I took Julio Jones at this point. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. AJ, you yeah, agree? I- I like the move um, for him, honestly. Uh, And Bill O'Brien's just out there doing Bill O'Brien stuff still. (laughs) Um, So I I don't understand how he still has a job, but he's got to have some, some really good pictures of uh, of Houston's (laughs) owner somewhere. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I love Murley, uh, Kyler Murray being able to, to jump right in and, and have a, a, like a legit number one weapon. Um, I mean, Kirk is good, but he's not Hopkins and Fitz is just basically on his last legs. So I think he'll be, you know, able to still draw some, some coverage away from Hopkins. Um, but yeah, I, I like this move a lot for, for Arizona. Yeah. I seem to agree with both of you guys. So over to the other side, David Johnson. Not really quite sure why anybody would want him, especially for the price tag that it costs them. But it happens, so we got to deal with it. Is there any hope for some sort of revival from him, Jake, in Houston? Or are we just are we done with this guy at this point? Well, I think there still is. If The biggest question is just whether or not he can get back to even – 90 percent of what he was we all watched him last year and at times it looked like he was walking out there and so the back injury is a concern but you know with the fact that basically no teams can do much to test players medically and i know cam newton had one within the house before but you know the panthers let him do that uh, they were trying to get a trade so i'm assuming that either they figured out something on the texans end or they just had enough confidence that he's fine and to make a trade like that that just has to tell you that they think there's still something there left. So I think it's very much like Todd Gurley. I think you draft David Johnson as an RB3, knowing he still has top 15 upside. But it's more likely you get a bust. (laughs) (laughs) AJ, you agree? Yeah. I mean, I think Johnson, I I don't know what has happened to him. I mean, he has had such a huge fall from grace um, from being, you know, a number one guy, no-brainer top five draft pick to – I want nothing to do with this guy. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want any shares of him. Um, I, I think that maybe he's in a better situation here, um, but I still need to see something out of him to prove that he still has the abilities that he that he did. Um, and that it's just not some, you know, it wasn't some flukes, you know, a couple of seasons that he had there. So um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll probably stay away from him this year but I mean, if i can take... get him at a massive value then then i probably will take the plunge and and just see what happens would either of you take him as like your rb3 if you sit in there or like even rb4 just to take a stab i would take him as an rb3 because at that point i also have three wide receivers already so yeah most it's likely. probably even this it's probably like the seventh round for me yeah 
I mean, yeah, I, if, if he's falling that far, I'm, I'm definitely going to jump in on him. And it, it's, it's one of those names that you're just sitting there like, why is this guy still on the draft board? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all you're right. Gonna have to like, oh, and man, then he do just I... burns you every time. Yep. So, all right. All right. So moving on, um, uh, Stick, uh, stick with the, the receiver game here a little bit. Uh, we got the Minnesota Vikings traded Stefan Diggs to the Buffalo Bills for a 2020 first, a 2020 fifth, a 2020 sixth, and a 2021 fourth, and gave back their seventh and Diggs. I mean, that's that's quite a haul for, for Diggs. And, I mean, Diggs is a talented receiver, but I, I don't know. Do you think they uh, the Bills bought in a little too heavy there, Jake? I mean, it's worth it for what the Bills are doing, but it, obviously it's not a great fancy situation for Diggs, mostly because you go from somebody who is near 70% accuracy to somebody who even can't get to 60%. So, yeah, he's a terrific route runner, and that's what somebody like Josh Allen needs, similar to like Cam Newton, once they finally turned the corner over there and got away from those big body wide receivers. But... I would say that it's not a significant downtick, but it's, it's enough that you got to downgrade him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Think, um, I, I mean, I, it, it, yeah, I did. It definitely downgrades him a good bit to me. I, I do think it, it at least increases, um, you know, Josh Allen's, value just just slightly for looking at other weapons you know it, it hurts john brown john brown's definitely not going to get quite the target share he, he had last year um but yeah i mean as far as like any of these receivers i mean they all take a big downgrade just because josh allen is super inaccurate you know until he like you said jake until he can turn the corner which good luck figuring out when that's going to be um the receivers are going to have total total dud games more you know unfortunately more frequently than they would elsewhere it feels like so. Well, the thing I, I got to look at there is just uh, real quick. I, I mean, it's it's interesting because now he's you know clearly the number one guy. I mean, John Brown had a great season last year, um, so he's not someone to sleep on. But I, I mean, I just think it's a very interesting situation, you know, for what they have now because John Brown's going to end up turning into uh, Adam Thielen. Maybe I don't know. Mm. Not quite the same type of receiver. Uh, yeah. But the the well, one thing I'll exactly. say that I f- that I found was interesting, and, and I wish I had saved the stat or you know saved the tweet, but somebody posted like Diggs numbers inside a dome, obviously because he played in Minnesota, to um outside of a dome, and they were atrocious outside the dome. So it's like, oh no, like you better hope that that's not really the case, and he can figure things out in Buffalo because it gets cold and cold quick. Yeah, but all right. Moving on here, we got a we got a tight end, Jake Hayden Hurst traded uh, to the Atlanta Falcons, shockingly for the same pick value as DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, granted, there was no player back with it, but still, so it felt kind of weird seeing that. Um, you know, I yeah, they don't they they don't have uh, they they did trade. Um, totally blanking on his name. It's like we're talking about him later, but. Um, Hooper, they got rid of Hooper did not resign with them. So, so moving on to Hurst, um, he's going to have targets, I guess, but I mean, how much are we really buying into Hurst having tremendous, you know, or you know, real fantasy value for the tight end position next year? I am a hundred percent, honestly, uh, I'll yeah. take them. Oh, I'll take them over the Hooper at this point until they get rid of Njoku because Njoku there and the fact that Stefanski loves to run, 12 and have the two tight ends out there. I mean, I, I don't trust Hooper to see that kind of target share, despite, you know, you have 21% of the targets going to tight ends in Cleveland. Is it always going to be Hooper if both of them are still there? Now, if they get rid of Njoku, that's another situation. But as of mm-hmm. today, Hurst caught 30 of his 40 targets last year. If Hurst even doubles that number, and, you know, it doesn't have to be that same efficiency where he only gets 80 targets, but he gets 90, 100 targets as the third option and gets 60, 705. I mean, that's a tight end one. That's all yeah. it takes to be a tight end one. It doesn't take that much. So no, it doesn't. I think Hurst, as as of today, I'd rather just wait, take Hurst, than to take Hooper at his price. Yeah. I, I like the move. Um, I really liked Hayden Hurst, honestly. Last year, I thought, you know, once he was finally given some opportunity, 
he really he really took it and ran with it and and he's been you know a really solid player for the Ravens over the past few years um you know he, he hasn't gotten a ton of opportunities though uh in the passing game which surprising seeing as they just never really seem to have solid receivers to throw to um so I think uh I think with with Matt Ryan throwing to him now and just knowing what Hooper did last year, I think that's a great fit for him. So moving to the next guy we got here, our last uh, trade that we want to talk about is uh, BDN. Uh, Mr. Nick Foles is now going to the Chicago Bears, the team that he basically took out of the playoffs the last uh, good season he had when he was with Philly two years ago. Now, Foles didn't really pan out for Jacksonville, um, got injured, and then came back and got injured. So it's kind of – it's not surprising to see that they traded him, but what do you uh, what do you think for Foles in, in uh, 2020, Jake? Do you think he's going to be the guy, or is it still going to be Trubisky? And does no, it really matter the, for fantasy? No, I put the odds on Foles as of today. I mean, it, just watching the two quarterbacks, despite a lot of the metrics being similar, I mean, you can watch the two quarterbacks and know who the better quarterback is, and that's Nick Foles right now. I mean, Trubisky didn't, not only didn't like improve last year, he arguably took a step back. So yeah. I, I would put it on Foles. Uh, it, but the good thing is, you know, even if it is Trubisky, Allen Robinson was fine as a wide receiver one. So I think this just only locks him in as a wide receiver one on the chance that Foles does have this job. And I think what you saw in Anthony Miller late in the season, whoever it might be again, you know, it can only like floors last year and you saw how good he could be late in the year. And then it's only up if Foles takes over at quarterback. So I think this is good and we can hope for Foles, but I don't think it's as bad as people want to make it out to be if we are stuck with Trubisky. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the thing with Trubisky is that he's just, he just says he's like, awful games where you, it, he just ruins everybody except for like, except for Allen. It felt like, or Allen Robinson, it, it felt like, cause he just kept peppering him with targets. But yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping for Foles here. I think he's an overall better quarterback, even though, like you said, the metrics are pretty similar. Um, you know, I, fantasy wise, as far as the two quarterbacks, I, I guess Trubisky might be slightly better for fantasy cause he runs, but you know, it's kind of whatever. I'm not relying on either one of those guys for fantasy if I can help it. So, all right, man. Uh, jumping in here, let's get to the signings. Um, first one here. Oops, I totally skipped around on the slides like an idiot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first one here, Melvin Gordon. Obviously the big holdout guy last year. Moves on from L.A., no surprise, but signs in division with the Denver Broncos who currently have Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman on the roster. I mean, what are we, how, he can't possibly be an RB one coming into this year now because of the roster. And, and this, I know he shared times with Eckler, but like, I'm firmly like off Gordon. Cause I think people are still kind of buying into like, he might be the bell cow. And it was said that today, you know, in, in a few places, but what's your thoughts on that? Uh, actually, I do think it can be an RB1, but I think it'll be very much similar to what we saw with Gordon and Eckler, just at a slightly lesser degree. And why I say it can be an RB1 is because once Gordon was in the swing of things in the second half of the season, talking about RB6 or 7, Gordon being the higher one, and then Eckler was down, I think, 12 in both formats. Or I think, no, it was 9 and 12. It was 9 for Gordon and 12 for Eckler. So if you tick them down to 12, 13, 14 for Gordon, and then, you know, 16, 17, 18 for Lindsey, I think that's exactly what we're going to get. It's just a lesser team. So I don't think you pay to get him as a number one. Nobody's going to. Mm -hmm. But from the sound of it, nobody even really wants him as a high-end RB2, which sounds like I'm going to be getting all of the Gordon next year. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of one of those, like, he, he was a he was a usage monster in in L.A., and uh, you know, except not so for, much the second half of last year when he was really good. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like his yards, you know, his yards per carry have never been all that great. Um, you know, he gets a lot of work in the passing game, but I kind of wonder if that's going to go down with possibly two guys that can that can work. I know Eckler was phenomenal, but I don't know. I just feel like there's going to be 
unless they get rid of Lindsay or Freeman, I think I'm just not going to buy up for, for Gordon unless he slips, you know, to the back end of the RB2 range for me. I just, I'm kind of irked out about the whole situation. I'm not sure why. AJ, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think it's definitely an interesting move to one, stay in the division, and two, go to a team that doesn't really run the ball. Um, I don't know. I, I think Eckler was definitely the better back between the two of them last year. And that's, you know, obviously only when Melvin came back and started playing. But uh, I mean, this just opens everything up for Eckler. I, I think he's going to be, you know, untouchable for me next year because everybody's going to be jumping in on him, uh, you know, and rightfully so. But I don't I don't really love this move for Gordon personally. So, all right. So the biggest news potentially is, uh, you know, it's been hinted at since the Super Bowl commercial and all the random untweeted stuff and whatever. So Tom Brady signs with Tom Brady. Oh, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay. Uh, lots to consider here, though. We we hear people saying that it was because Evans and Godwin are there that Brady can now be a top twelve quarterback again. Uh, I mean, do you agree with that, Jake? Yeah, he was a twelfth last year. So if he was twelfth last year, throwing to garbage essentially for most of this team outside of Edelman when he was healthy, if he can do that last year, he's not the same Brady we knew, and he's not obviously making poor wide receivers better like he used to do. And I would still take quarterbacks with more rushing upside over him, you know, depending on Winston, if he lands a full-time job as a starter, I would take, I would still take Winston over him. There's a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, Josh Allen was inside the top 10. I think he's locked in there now already. If not, it would even before the addition of Diggs. So there's a lot of quarterbacks that, you know, the rushing upside, some more appeal there, but you put him in that range of, you know, like uh, I would put him in a Baker Mayfield bouncing back. Well, not, I guess bouncing back because he really hasn't put it all together yet, but kind of in that range of like, I would take him before I took Jared Goff. I hate Jared Goff. So I would take <laughs> Brady before I do that because he's not going to look. <laughs> yeah. Like he's going to be more efficient. He's not throwing for 5,000 yards, but he could easily match touchdowns. He could immediately easily throw for 35 touchdowns with that weapon. With the, I mean, look at that three, 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 four guys, whichever way you want to cut it. It's, it's going to happen where he's going to probably throw for at least 30 touchdowns. Yeah. I wonder what do you think about OJ Howard's value now that Tom Brady's there? You know, obviously New England, most tight ends, you know, obviously Gronk, but like there were other tight ends there that thrived. Do we think OJ Howard can be useful this year or is it just Bruce Arians still and we're just not going near it? Uh, it's because it could be Cameron Bray is the problem. Like it's not, it's not OJ Howard. And neither it's one of them Bruce did much. Did <laughs> well, no, but to your point, it's, it's not, it's not him. It's, it, completely Bruce Arians and it's uh, why I say Cameron Bray is because at least he gets to run routes the majority of the time True. he's on the field the problem with OJ Howard is he's running routes 40 some odd percent of the time like that's true you're just not going to be valuable so if Bruce Arians still sees him as the great pass blocker that he is this isn't the Patriots it isn't Rob Gronkowski where he was one of the best run blockers and pass blockers that people didn't realize because he's just so damn good in the passing game right. O.J. Howard's that same mold, and he's not quite Rob Gronkowski, but it's the same mold, and Arians wants him to block. So unless he's going to start running routes at least 60% of the time, it's not he's not going to matter for fantasy. And to go back to it with the Tom Brady, for it was two or three years ago where he threw for 30-some-odd touchdowns and over 4,000 yards. He threw 1,000 yards and a bunch of touchdowns to Gronkowski, 1,000 yards, and it's actually right around 1,000, 1,100 yards to Edelman. His third-place receiver – was Amendola with 600 yards and two touchdowns. So even if it is O.J. Howard, it's Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are going to gobble up the majority of it. Yeah, no, I, I do like this move for Brady. The, the other side of this that I want to ask about is because Brady doesn't, like you said, he doesn't make receivers better anymore, right? Like he's, he's not that caliber quarterback anymore. Do we downgrade Evans and Godwin just slightly because of that? I'm not downgrading Godwin at all, honestly. Okay. I, I think Godwin one is too good, and Godwin hits the field where 
Brady makes his hay. And, you know, especially like that Edelman, and he's not Edelman for everybody out there, but, you know, he's in that same area where that's where he's going to be playing a lot. That's where he's going to be absorbing space. Mike Evans, we know more developing plays, bigger downfield, bigger in the red zone, which I think Tom Brady will be fine with. But I would slightly downtick Mike Evans. If you told me both of them finished as wide receiver ones, which if you put Gronkowski at wide receiver that year with Edelman, they both would have just sneaked in there. Mm-hmm. If they both finished as wide receiver ones, it wouldn't shock me, but I would say Chris Godwin wide receiver one and Mike Evans just outside of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, let's All right. move on here to, uh, to Todd Gurley. Mr. Arthritic knee gets signed by the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, you know, Obviously, you know, two, three, two, three, two and three years ago, he was amazing. Best running back in the league, bar none, right? Last year had the knee problems, um, wasn't used quite as much. And even when he did, it wasn't quite as effective. Moving to Atlanta, I mean, how do we see his value shaken out here uh, on, on this team with has arguably better weapons than the Rams, really, when you look at it? Yeah, I'd say exactly like David Johnson. You draft him as an RB3, but unfortunately, I think somebody in your league, if not two or three people, are going to draft him as an RB2, knowing he has top 15 upside, even if, like David Johnson, he's 90% of what he used to be. He's more likely to be healthier and more okay than David Johnson. That's why I'd say some people are going to pay that RB2 price, but I don't want him as my RB2 just because – I don't know that he lasts the season, and I don't know if he you know, even is able to play every single game and what is effectiveness every single game. But the real appeal here is the backfield's his. Backfield, like right. he's not going to be touching the ball 25 times a game, but we're not worried about Ito Smith and Kadri Olsen and all that rest of the backs. It's, it's, it's his backfield. It's just his backfield for as long as he can stay healthy. And I think the Falcons are going to be smart with that too, and they're not going to give him the ball 25 times a game because they know to. that. That was a great move and a smart move, especially for what they paid. But we know the risk going into it. I just, again, I wouldn't take him as more. I mean, maybe if I went four wide receivers and a running back and he was my RB2, I could see that in a full point PPR because the upside is just so great there. Uh, but I, again, I still I feel like somebody's going to jump into the fourth round on him in, in every single draft, and I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's it's still a, a little too high of a risk for me to jump back in on on the girly train. So let let him go on to to be with someone else. Uh, so the next guy we got here, moving back into the receiver territory, we got uh, Emmanuel Sanders has signed with the Saints. Um, I mean, Jake, do you think he can finally be the second receiver that the Saints have needed for years? Does this drop Michael Thomas, you know, off the number one receiver for you at all? Or what are your thoughts? Yeah, he'll be the number two, but I want nothing to do with him. And it doesn't affect Michael Thomas any which way for me because he's the number three option in the passing game. Just like when you go back to all those years, the, the problem is it's it's still Drew Brees. My, look, Emmanuel Sanders will finish as a top 35 wide receiver. You can write that down, mark it, etch it into stone. <laughs> it's going to happen. But good luck figuring okay. out which games it's going to matter because that's <laughs> go back. It's Devery Henderson and Lance Moore and Robert Meacham and all the rest, Ted Ginn for the one year that he was really good there. Like just go figure it out. Look, look at the game log. It, it's the biggest problem with the tight ends and with like Jared Cook and like, you know, they finally started to come through a little bit more, but you know, even at the, the, the tight end position outside of the fact that like Jimmy Graham's best season, like it's just been, don't I don't want anything to do with it. I, so best ball, which I hate because I hate that as a crutch argument because I feel like you can say everybody is valuable in best ball. Of <laughs> but in this case, this the only place I personally would ever draft Emmanuel Sanders is in best ball. So you don't think that Emmanuel Sanders, I think we can all agree, has is more talented than all of those receivers you you mentioned. Despite his age, mm. you don't no. think he can no. be a more I reliable disagree already. <laughs> really? I don't think he's better than Lance Moore at this point of his career. This is not the Emmanuel Sanders we used to know. We we're talking three years ago. I'll he agree was with you. pretty good for Sam Fran, dude. Like, I don't know. What, three times? Hey, three times. I don't know. What? I mean, I thought I'll buy you a pretty... Sanders jersey. <laughs> I'm not the Sanders fan. But... For, for your homerism over here. Uh, over homerism? I. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Redskins fan, sadly, but um, so no, no, no Sanders. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I feel like he's more talented. He he's a smarter receiver. I I, I don't know. 
I feel like he can be a little more consistent. I, I do agree with you that I, I kind of don't really want him, but I think he can still be more consistent than most of the number two receivers that the Saints have had over the last couple of years. I think Drew Brees will be able to uh, rely on him and trust him a little more than he could, you know, Devery Henderson, right? I mean, Devery Henderson had like two good games every single year, if that. So, I don't know. I I buy in on East and Mando Sanders is a little bit more than, than that. But uh whatever, to each his own. All right, let's get a quarterback in here. Phillip Rivers signs with the Colts after his entire career being in San Diego, minus what, one day with the Giants? Uh right? That's right. Like two hours with the Giants. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um I mean, Rivers have been kind of on the decline the last couple of years, but still putting up, you know, I mean, still putting up numbers, but it's just interceptions are going up. You know, the rating is going down type of thing. It's just he's moving in the wrong direction. He's getting older, and that has a lot to do with it. Moving over to Indy, he's going to get T.Y. Hilton, uh, you know, mix and match there, right, with – with uh, That's cool. No. Damn it. Keenan Allen. So, you know, Hilton for Keenan Allen, oh. fine, whatever. But, you know, the the secondary options, I'm not sure, are, are really better than what he had in San Diego. So, I mean, what do we think about Rivers' value coming into 2020? Uh, it remains to be seen what they do in the draft. It, that's the biggest thing. And I don't, don't want to put that out there, but as in, like, there's, but we don't. We don't have an answer because the offensive line is better. Uh, the backfield, similar, maybe not quite as good, but, you know, that's where you see some appeal. Like, maybe it's Naeem Hines. Maybe they draft somebody to be the Eckler. That's going to be where the sneaky value is, mm-hmm. is, especially if they don't add to the backfield and it is just Hines. Hines could be a real PPR value next year. I like Paris Campbell actually more for filling that Keenan Allen type role over the middle of the field and out of the slot and that kind of work because T.Y. Hilton is just going to be similar, more similar to Mike Williams was obviously with more speed, but you know he's going to be hitting him downfield. I think Rivers can bounce back i don't think he'll be as great as he was at his peak but i think he could have a bounce back season but it's going to be the answer of what happens at number two and potentially even number three you know jack Doyle will be fine for him like hunter henry was but right now the question is is it's paris campbell zach pascal and that roster Deion kane whoever versus a wide receiver you know if they draft cd lamb in the first round you know, now I'm like, ooh, uh, okay, Philip Rivers could bounce back. Still, the thing is, though, is we're still not taking Philip Rivers outside of a super flex or two quarterback league, anyway, though. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. That. I mean, I think there's just too many, too many wild cards right now with the draft coming up and and his age and it only being a one year deal. I mean, I I don't know. I'm not really buying into to Rivers that much. I don't I don't like that much of Indian Ty is just too injury prone for me at this point so i'm passing yeah all right so off to a situation that is kind of crazy the Carolina panthers quarterback right so they they they're i don't know i haven't read the news today but have they finally officially released cam or is this still like they're gonna do it but they haven't done it yet somebody let no, me he's know. gone okay <laughs> i thought so i just the so yeah so they've released Cam. They signed Teddy Bridgewater away from the Saints. And then they signed XFL star PJ Walker, who Matt Rule coached at Temple, so likes him a lot. Uh, and then they traded Kyle Allen to the Redskins for a fifth round pick. So now the Redskins have even one less pick. Good job, guys. Um You know, and remember they still got Will Greer there, who, you know, they they liked last year. I mean, they drafted him in the third round. That's not a terrible round to take a quarterback who you think could be a potential, you know, future quarterback for you. What are we making of this quarterback situation for, for Carolina? I mean, is this just Teddy's job? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Uh, I don't see how it's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, Walker's intriguing a little bit, but I kind of wonder if they would like use Walker, in other situations, he just seems like a dynamic player, really. Um, I wonder if he could almost be, you know, like somebody who just comes out of the backfield, in like two quarterback situations and like gets thrown the ball or something. I don't know. It's just kind of crazy because he's just athletic, it seems like. 
But um, I didn't watch a ton of XFL, but I've seen the highlights of him and highlights of him, and he, you know, he seems like he's he's uh, pretty electric out there. So, all right, with Teddy there, I want to ask you, you know, how, how do we think those receivers were fair? I mean, a lot of people were really on DJ Moore this year. Still are, it seems like. Um, are, are you one of those? Uh, it depends on what that means. I think t- I think DJ Moore's value holds. I, I think the problem is a lot of people out there have DJ Moore hitting wide receiver one next year, and I just don't see that happening. Not with Teddy Bridgewater, a quarterback, not with – Christian McCaffrey seeing 150 targets or something right. ridiculous like that. It was 143 last year. I mean, he might actually see more with Teddy Bridgewater quarterback. I mean, the, the biggest thing is you can run every single number that's out there between whether you want yards per attempt or yards per completion or air yards per attempt or air yards total or right? just pick an eight, like all of them. Teddy Bridgewater's yards downfield suck because he's not a good deep ball throw. Now, maybe Matt rule knows something we don't know. And, you know, because of the signing with Robbie Anderson just doesn't make sense on paper. And maybe he thinks he can fix it. Maybe he think he's, he knows him. Maybe he thinks he knows more than everybody else. There's the Robbie Anderson connection with rule too. So I, I, I don't understand it from the standpoint of like understanding who Teddy is. But the biggest thing is, is like, if you look at Teddy versus Kyle Allen, Kyle Allen was actually even better than Teddy was in the intermediate game. That's how bad Teddy's game is more than five, 10 yards downfield. So I think DJ Moore, I don't know why people want to put him in wide receiver one territory. Uh, Curtis Samuel, for me, is completely off the board now with the signing of Robbie Anderson. And Robbie Anderson, I think, is just going to be what he was last year. He's going to be wide receiver 39-ish or right around there again. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, that was the next guy we had on the list was obviously just Robbie Anderson, you know. And how does that affect DJ Moore? And I 100% agree with you. I don't really understand the signing, especially with the quarterbacks they have there. Like, Bridgewater's not known as a downfield guy like that. And so that's probably in his game, but I guess maybe they're just thinking stretch the field and maybe that opens up more and Samuel more and McCaffrey more. I, I, I don't know. It, it'll, it'll be interesting to watch for sure, but I, I don't really want anything to do with Anderson. What do you think AJ? It, yeah, I'm probably going to stay away from Anderson this year. Um, I do like all of the random, you know, Matt rule, like, tie-ins um i I think that that's you know we're we're getting the band back together sort of a deal but it remains to be seen what can happen with that on the actual football field didn't another Um, college coach come in and try to do that and it failed miserably oh yeah the redskins spurrier (laughs) spurrier yeah Yeah, let's see how that works (laughs) the old ball coach um yeah that that was a horrible horrible experiment and as a uh, gators fan growing up that was very disheartening to see, but yeah, I, I don't think I'm I'm touching Anderson. Um, I mean, if DJ Moore falls to me at the right time, I think I'll jump in on him. I'm, I don't have any shares of him right now in any of my keeper leagues that are you know kind of dangling out there. But I, that's that's where I'm at with him. Fair I'll just take uh, CMC and, and be happy with that. <laughs> Good so, luck. We have 101. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, well, moving back into uh, uh, tight ends, we talked about Austin Hooper earlier, and he has signed with the Browns. So he leaves uh, the the cozy confines of Matt Ryan for uh, the, you know, bathroom-dwelling Baker Mayfield commercials. Um, I mean, he was amazing last season in Atlanta, but – do you think that success is going to carry over to Cleveland next year, Jake? Uh, as we were saying before, not unless they get rid of Njoku. Uh, the, the targets are there. As I mentioned before, there's 21% of the targets went to the tight end, and those garbage tight ends for the Browns last year. We're talking about Ricky Seals-Jones being one of the better ones, and Njoku barely played. But if Njoku's healthy in there, and it's Stefanski, and running two tight ends, I just I don't see... I mean, we remember, for everybody out there, Hooper was number one at tight end before he got hurt. And then even with the missed time, he still almost had 100 targets. I don't know that he gets 100 targets over 16 games if Njoku's there with Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry, unless Jarvis Landry starts a month late into the season. But then you still have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt at the backfield. I just don't see where the targets are going to come. Yeah, I mean, hey, Atlanta, Atlanta was pretty loaded too, but just, again, he didn't have the competition at tight end, so I, I can agree with you there. Um, and it's just – not the same offense. They're not going to be, you know, passing it nearly as much as Atlanta did. So yeah, it's uh, 
it's not looking good for Hooper's value, but people are going to draft this guy, you know, based off of last year's stats a little bit too much, I feel like. So he will not be on any of my teams, I have a feeling. All right, let's wrap some things up here. So we rapid fire here. Um, Brashad, per- Brashad Perryman um, had a great end of last season with the Tampa Bay Bucks after Evans and then Godwin got hurt, or maybe it was the opposite. Either way, um, signs with the Jets. I mean, this doomed. He's Adam Gase. Bye bye. You're not. We're not. We're not worried about you anymore. Perryman. No, or, I'll give you four words. Copy paste Robbie Anderson. Fair enough. Um <laughs> so best ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or your wide receiver or a wide receiver four. Yeah, I guess. Um so we got Brian Hoyer. Obviously Tom Brady's gone. We've got Jared Sidham there, but they signed Brian Hoyer. I mean, who's going to be the guy there? Like, either one of those two, or do we? They got to get somebody from the draft, right? Mm, not necessarily. Not unless, you know, and then no no team ever admits to doing it, and you can't get the players on board because the players are going to always play for their contracts and play for their careers. But the front office and the coaching staff can agree on trying to tank. It's just, like I said, tanking doesn't work because the Dolphins proved. Tanking doesn't work because the players don't want to do it. So. Right. They might try, and they might ri- roll Stidham out there, and that would kind of be a very big testament. I I keep saying the perfect op- option already happened now, whether or not that Cam hasn't sided because teams do want their own doctors to look at Cam, and maybe I can understand that, but the Patriots would make a ton of sense to go get Cam because it could be like, hey, look, we tried. If Cam <laughs> sucks in the first three games and just can't play anymore, True well, not only do we side. look like we try, but we also tank at the same time. You get the best of both worlds. Like, why not do it? But... I mean, you're looking at this roster right now. This this might be the one. This is this kind of feels similar to when the Colts lost Peyton Manning, went that one year, and then turned right around and got Andrew Luck. It kind of feels like that. And yeah, and I'm not saying it's necessarily (laughs) going to be Trevor Lawrence, but I don't know that the answers in this draft for the Patriots. I I, but I'm again, I'm sitting here. We're all sitting here. Nobody knows what the hell the Patriots are thinking any given day. The Patriots have like 30 picks this year. It feels like they always do. Uh, they could just trade up and get get somebody, right? But I don't know. It's yeah, I I, I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. I just figured I'd ask your opinion. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> uh, last one or not last one here, but uh, Eric Ebron signs with the Steelers. I mean, we thinking he's gonna bounce back to anywhere close to his 2018 numbers, or just no too much competition, not even close to being that good. No, that was a one year outlier with. Andrew Luck, and it was all the touchdown. So, no, because the biggest thing is Vance McDonald's there for as long as he's healthy. So, you know, sure, red zone threat, probably one of the better ones they have right now. And for all the hate that he gets about his hands, it's it's kind of similar to Jordan Howard, and I liken him to that for the people out there. It's like the hands aren't as bad as people make them out to be for either one of them. It's just the problem is it's always on TV. It's steam like a snowball. And then it's usually in bad situations, like where it's like, you know, it's exponentially like, okay, it was in the red zone or in the end zone. And so then everybody's like, oh my God, his hands suck. His hands aren't that bad. They're not the best, but, you know, I think he could be fine. But the problem is Vance McDonald, Juju Smith Schuster being back, James Washington, who I still like. And then they have Deontay Johnson. They might still even draft the wide receiver. Uh, I just, I don't see Ebron. I mean, we're talking about in order to be what he was even close to that year, we're talking 10 plus touchdowns. I don't see 10 plus touchdowns coming. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so the last couple guys we got here up on our slide, uh, two Cowboys. Uh, Mari Cooper re-signs for uh, five years, 100 mil with 60 mil guaranteed. Um, that was definitely a priority for them, but Dak is also a priority for them. Um, he was hit with the exclusive franchise tag, so he's not able to sign with anyone else at this point, but you know, he hasn't signed that tag yet. And uh, the, the sides are apparently back at the negotiation table from what I heard today. Um, Dak wants five years. The Cowboys only want to offer four uh, or, or vice versa, maybe. Um, what what do you think of, of the Dallas situation? Uh, for Amari Cooper, I guess, because Dak is Dak at, you know, that, I mean, he's just who he is. It's yeah. be exactly the same thing. Top 10 quarterback, um, potentially even top five again. But Amari Cooper is somebody that 
never has been and never will end up on my team unless I trade for him after the owner gets frustrated because hmm. in three games last year, over 40% of his fantasy points for the entire year. The, if you want to deal with that, if you want to bang your head against the wall, drafting a wide receiver one that shows up for half the season, go right ahead. That's why I never owned Deshaun Jackson hmm. in his prime. Amari Cooper is a better real life player than he is fantasy wise because of that inconsistency. If you can get him as your wide receiver two, please do. But wide receiver two in the third round after you already have a running back and a wide receiver one, he never makes it that far. And he's never going to. Somebody's always going to take him as their wide receiver one. And he finishes as a wide receiver one, but he finishes as a wide receiver one off three or four games. And that's yeah. never going to happen for my fantasy team. Yeah, we always talk about Amari Cooper. So we always have Bob Long on this show during some of the football preseason stuff. But he does his football consistency guide. And we always talk about Amari Cooper because he's in that category. Uh, he's super inconsistent. It's like, good luck figuring out when he's going to be good. Uh, but you can't bench this guy because those games where he's good, you know, he's awesome. But it's just like, uh, he kills you the other ones. And it's just like, I, I can't handle it. I totally agree with you. All right. So the last thing we got here is our uh, top remaining free agents to uh, to still sign. We already touched on Cam Newton. Um Jameis is out there. Uh, you got Carlos Hyde. You got Jadavian Clowney. Now, three of those four guys are number one overall picks, and they're all free agents. So that's kind of interesting. But I mean, what do you what are your thoughts on on any of these guys? Um, where they may end up, or, or whether it matters. Uh, Winston is probably the one that makes the least amount of sense to me because you know. Well, even if you get Winston from last year, you can still win with that. Yeah, you don't want to see 30 interceptions. But, eh, you know, if you watch some of those, honestly, you could go, you could put it both ways. Some of them weren't his fault, and then he probably could have had more. So maybe he did deserve 30. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> either way, you know, maybe like maybe the LASIK's a real thing. Maybe he really was playing through it. I just, you know, everybody says, oh, if Bruce Arians couldn't fix him. Well, you know, you're telling me that, you know, maybe Bill Belichick, it won't you know, agree to sign them, which is fine. I can understand why, but you're telling me Bill Belichick can't potentially fix them. You're telling me there's not anybody out there that could potentially fix them. And I keep saying this and I, it's obviously not going to happen, but if I'm the dolphins, forget trying to trade up, forget trying to figure out if two is hundred percent healthy, just go sign Winston and rebuild your roster with your 8 billion picks, because now you can address all the other positions. You still need help at like wide receiver and defense and, you know, potentially another offensive line piece. You don't have to spend one on two and potentially even trade up to still get to it. I think that makes a ton of sense. And I know they have Fitzpatrick, but I would bench Fitzpatrick for Winston. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I, on, um, I don't know if Winston has a starting job at this point. I mean, if no. he hasn't been signed uh, now, yeah, I don't, I don't feel there's like not a lot of, well, how many places are left now outside of the Patriots. There's just not a lot there. So uh, wow, if he's looking at really a backup, any. no, if he's looking at a some... backup job for his career, the one that makes the most sense for me, but they don't have the cap space. They would have to finagle some things is the Steelers in case big Ben's not hundred percent. I was just going to say, I, I've heard a lot of talk about the Steelers going out and getting. Yeah, him. I started that. <laughs> Did you really? All right. Good work. <laughs> nice. the, the only other uh, spot that I could see would be potential, you know, starting position would be uh, the chargers. I mean, they've got Tyrod Taylor there who, Obviously, me and Joe are fans of being Hokies, Hokies. but you know, I I like him as a starter. I don't know if I like him as a long term option. Uh, I mean, I think he's serviceable, but Jameis, I think, has the better pedigree. Um, so that could be interesting to drum up some competition there. But other than that, I, I would assume Clowney just goes back to Seattle uh, as long as they can get their numbers to match up. So. We shall see. We shall see. All right, Jake. So um, that's all we had. Um, before we let you go, uh, let everybody know, you know, in these times of uncertainty, what we can expect from you and the athletic uh, until things get back to normal. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, uh, I have my rookie rankings coming out next week. Nice. And expecting awesome. at the athletic for everybody out there, go actually go pick my article because it helps me but <laughs> go to any article uh, you can go look at what we're talking about today i wrote up mm -hmm. all my opinions on the free agent signings and trades and stuff like that or wait for the rookie article it right now is 90 free days because you know they're nice. throwing out stuff like out of the park baseball and all right. these random fun things just because <laughs> there's not a whole lot to talk about outside wow. of even football so 
90 free days, which is unheard of. And also hopefully by that point, because that takes us on like July, mm -hmm. we have sports by that point. So you'll be drafting your fantasy football team by that point anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have uh I don't have my direct TV box set up down in my basement where my office is that I'm working at. So I just watch uh ESPN's app and I watched Get Up at eight and then I watched Get Up again for the late risers <laughs> at noon and then I repeated I think two. So it's like Okay, I need something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Time to stream something on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. So all right, Jake. Well, uh, appreciate you coming on. Uh, definitely always good information from you. Good advice. So uh, we'll have to do it again soon. Uh, we'll play in something for sure for the fantasy football previews, if if, it, if not anything else. Sounds good. All right, man. All right. Good luck. Uh, stay on, safe man. out there. <laughs> Thanks, you too. All right. Take care. See ya. All right, AJ. Well, that's all we have, man. Um, you got anything else to add as, uh, you know, we're missing baseball? No, <laughs> not really. Um, just be wary of the uh, the quarantine 15 because uh, I, I definitely <laughs> I feel it. like I'm going to be hitting in on that uh, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? <laughs> Day five. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, uh... all I've done is just eat and want to eat and continue to eat since i've been home it's like great bought all this food and uh now i'm spending more money to go get more because we've already ate our way through everything so yeah it's uh it's been fun yeah i'm not gonna lie it's been a I, bit of i a definitely struggle. have plenty of beer to try to rifle through so i i don't think i'll be getting through all that anytime probably soon. not helping the quarantine 15 just gonna uh. say it's but. it's actually really helping the quarantine fifteen become the quarantine one fifty. I was gonna say, okay, yeah, as as you open up beer two, um, was that beer three? Wow, all right, which one's that? No, that's my two tropical bitch. Ah, I've got one of those in the fridge. Yeah, this is they're uh, good, the, man. I've had those. I gave that a four and a quarter I, two, I think. I I bought a whole case of it because I was it's like, awesome, dude. Uh, it's really all right, good. Whatever, I'll try it. <laughs> You bought a 12-er? No, I bought a 24. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't remember the last time I actually bought a full-on case of one beer. Try, because drive some I of that over here, man. Just, I'm good. What's that? Drive some of that over here if you want to get rid of it. <laughs> You're good. I, I may have to at some point. I'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll, take, we'll take see take some. We'll see how long the uh just, just take your te lasts. Just take your temperature before you get over here. We'll be fine. <laughs> no, my my temperature's good. I'm, I, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I will. I will for your sake and your family. <laughs> all right, yeah, man. No, that's, um, that's all I got. Yeah. So I don't. We'll have to brainstorm some stuff, man. Like I mentioned last week. Thankfully, NFL free agency kind of saved our butts this week. But uh, we're gonna have to brainstorm some stuff. If dude, honestly, if any of you guys want us to talk about topics you got you got ideas like you know stats you want us to talk about between players and things like that like let us know uh hit us up on twitter i'm at fancy f6p underscore joe aj is at apple garth algar all right let us know man as always at fantasy six pack just hit us up there too leave comments on youtube use comments on anchor whatever like we see them uh make sure you subscribe yeah. to us follow us you name it it just helps um, you know, we, we want to be here. We realize everybody's kind of in the same situation. Not a lot to do. Sports is kind of an outlet. We want to help you be your outlet. It's our outlet too, guys. We yeah. want to talk it. Um, it gives us a Thursday night <laughs> to do something else besides sit here and veg on the couch and watch TV. So, um, yeah, let us know any topics you want. I'm sure we'll come up with something if you don't, but, uh, you know, we want to be here for you guys. Otherwise be safe and, uh, in, Joy being at home. <laughs> yeah. Please. Happy uh happy opening day. I know. Um, distraught. I, know. I wasn't able to uh oh, whoops, wrong side. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> like, able to doing? be at the uh, the O's uh O's game with my wife today. It's uh first first opening day that we've missed in seven years, maybe. I don't know. It's been a long time. Yeah. 
We had tickets for it, but we were gonna you know, go, dude. We were actually gonna so, buy tickets we'll, this year, we'll and then like randomly, I just decided not to, and then like all this stuff came down from the virus, and I was like, oh, apparently, I'm glad we didn't. So, all right, man, that's it. Talk to you later. Peace. All right.